2019 income requirements for spouse visa. In order to successfully be approved for a CR1 or IR1 spouse visa that allows your foreign spouse to enter the USA and take up permanent residence with you, U.S. immigration must be confident that you, the U.S. sponsor, have enough financial strength to support and feed your future family. They must be convinced that there is no chance your new family would need public benefits such as welfare or food stamps to survive. Halfway through the spouse visa process, which is currently about nine months in, the State Department's National Visa Center, NVC, requires you, the sponsor, to demonstrate your financial eligibility by submitting your financial evidences. It is critical to understand before you are at this stage what the financial requirements are so, so as to avoid surprises and denial, especially as the annual income requirements have greatly gone up this year from last year at much, a much greater bump than I've seen in decades. I am Fred Wall, the Visa Coach, and I help you get through a confusing and frustrating immigration process so you can have a happy life together in the USA with your foreign partner. And in case you are concerned that your income may not be enough, well, towards the end of this video, I will teach you how to get around that problem by the use of a joint sponsor. Now, let's talk about what are the financial eligibility requirements for a CR1 spouse visa in 2019. In order to successfully petition for your spouse to immigrate to the USA, you, the US sponsor, must demonstrate enough income coming in to support your house and household, your spouse and household. The financial requirement is that your income must be over 125% of the poverty income level where you live. And each year, the Department of Health and Human Services publishes their poverty guidelines. The new poverty guidelines, while well, they're published in February, have risen about $560 from last year. And as of February 2019, for residents in the continental U.S., the financial eligibility requirements for spouse visas are as follows. <clears throat> Required annual income is 21,138 if two persons are in the family or household, 26,063 if three persons, 32,188 if four persons in the family or household, and for each additional person, add $5,525. The financial eligibility thresholds are lower for active military, thank you for your service, and higher for residents of Alaska or Hawaii. Proving your income. Normally, you provide your most recent federal tax return, uh, three to six pay stubs showing year-to-date earnings, plus a letter from your employer confirming your job and what your annual expected annual pay is. If your income might be low, but you have money in the bank, your cash assets can be used as an alternative for annual income. And cash assets are assets which can be easily converted, say sold, to cash. For example, stocks, bonds, certificates of deposit, cash in the bank. Now you may have a lot of other assets such as your car, boat, coin collection, business, or investment property, but because these cannot be easily turned to cash, immigration will not accept them as an alternative to annual income. Now the one exception to that is an asset which is hard to convert but can be counted, and that is your home. If the market value of your home is higher than your mortgage, well, you may use the equity, well, just like a cash asset. Now, $5 of cash assets is the equivalent of $1 of annual income. So, for example, if your household is just, well, you and your new spouse, you need to have $21,138 annual income. But if you have no income, but you do have cash, well, you would need to have, well, 21138 times 5, or 105,690 of cash assets to qualify. Alternatively, a combination of income and assets would work. For example, if your income is $10,000 per year, the calculation for how much cash assets you would need would be as this. 21,138 annual income requirement, less the $10,000 income you have coming in, leaving, leaves a shortfall of 11,138. Then. 11,138 times 5, or 55,690, is the amount of cash assets you need to qualify.
What if you don't have enough income or assets? Well, in that case, you can ask a relative or friend to ask, act as a co-sponsor. Just like buying a car, your joint sponsor would co-sign your loan. Now, when you use a joint sponsor, the total size of the household increases. Now we combine all the people in your household plus those in your joint sponsors. So, for example, you ask your father to join sponsor, and your household is your household is just two persons, you and your new spouse. But your father's household is your father, mother, and the two children still living at home. Thus, the combined household would be six persons, and the combined income of both sponsor and joint sponsor together would need to be $43,238 or more to qualify. This was Fred Wall, the Visa Coach. Now please like or add your comments to this video and then go to visacoach.com and sign up for the Visa Coach monthly newsletter. Each month it is full of tips and advice on marriage-based immigration and, well, free of charge. And when you sign up, you get two free ebooks I have written, 120 K-1 Visa Interview Practice Questions and Five Things You Must Know Before Starting on Your Visa. Finally, when you are ready to get started, well, call for your complimentary case evaluation and speak with me directly. If you are considering hiring Visa Coach to personally guide you through your immigration adventure, join him for a complimentary case evaluation. He listens to you to learn the red flags and strengths of your case, your eligibility and goals. He suggests which visa is right for you, the best strategy to get it, and how soon your partner can join you. To learn more about Visa Coach's services and how he can help you, book your free case evaluation today.